Um, so now, why do you think that uh, someone should choose pepper spray or OC over a stun gun? Oh, uh, well, a handheld stun gun is a toy, and it, it, it's. Do you carry a, did, when you were a police officer? Did you carry a handheld stun gun? No. No. Why? Because all right, 25, 30 years ago. Uh, when they first came out, cops were like, ooh, this will be neat, and they went through the training, and they started using them on the street, and they found out that they still had to tackle people, they still had to wrestle them, and the best, the way they worked was when you had one cop sitting on top of a bad guy trying to get his hands to cuff him, and another cop comes up and just starts holding that thing on him until he gets annoyed and bored enough that he gives up his hands. Oh, a, a handheld stun gun is a contact device, which means you either have to A, close the gap and touch someone with it, or B, let them close the gap and then you touch them, uh, which is generally not a good thing. And who do we give these to? Do we have like six foot two, you know, 230 pound bodybuilders carrying around stun guns? No. What do we do? We go to the store and we buy them and we give them to our teenage daughters, our Aunt Susie, our Uncle Frank, you know, our moms and wives and stuff. You have a 140 pound wife. And she's about to be accosted by a 230-pound drunk moron. Do you want her to wait until he closes the gap with her or to deliberately close the gap on him? Or do you want her to stay away from this guy as far as possible? And I would say you probably don't want to go one-on-one -on -one with this guy. And they're like, oh, but I saw the blue sparks. The only people that are afraid of the blue sparks are you. Uh, the only people that, that think the blue sparks are scary is your grandma and your aunt Susie. Mm -hmm. uh, the people that are going to be punching you in the face and taking your wallet or you know just basically beating you up because you're there, they're not afraid of the blue sparks. Okay, so enough said. Now caveat asterisk to that, the, the taser, the actual taser product is no joke, but they're very expensive. Uh, you can buy, I mean you can fill your pockets with cans of pepper spray for the price of one taser. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I really want to uh, to touch base on this Walmart incident. So for everyone out there that hasn't seen the Walmart incident, uh, right about in this clip right here, or in this section, I'm going to post the video so that way you guys can all see it uh, as you're watching it as we go. But I want to I wanna go ahead and touch base on this. Now, uh, th basically what happened is a concealed carrier, uh, I believe he was in Florida, is walking into Walmart. And um, Paul, do you want to kind of say kind of what happened after that? Okay, yeah. I, well, I read the story and I watched the video, and essentially you had person A, um, who was like a 62-year-old 60, man, I believe it was, uh, had a concealed carry permit, gets out of his car, and apparently had his gun out of his holster in the car. So he gets out, standing next to his, his um, vehicle, takes the gun, puts it in a holster, covers it with his jacket. A guy sees him do this. So he follows him, you know, the uh, he's like 40-something years old. Guy follows the guy into the Walmart, waits till they get inside because apparently they're doing like reverse shoplifting where you have to wait for them to break the threshold inside. You guys know how the shoplifting laws work. <laughs> you can't nab somebody for shoplifting until they actually leave the building. Uh, but yeah, apparently he was doing the opposite. You know, he didn't feel like he could do anything until the guy got into the store. So uh, tackles him. Uh, grabs the guy, wrestles with him, gets him in like this half chokehold deal, screaming, he has a gun, he has a gun, blah, blah, And the guy's like, I can't, you know, I've got a permit, blah, blah, blah. Uh, from a completely legal standpoint, the, the guy with the gun presented no threat. He had no, he demonstrated no intent to harm anyone. And like we said, uh, just having a gun on your person uh, is, is that enough to justify an assault or an attack or physical? You know? So the, the guy, in, you know, the, the would-be hero guy, I don't know, uh, the ignorant person who doesn't, I don't know, apparently he didn't get the memo that people carry guns in Florida. Yeah. Apparently he's the only one out of the 30 million people who live in Florida that didn't get that memo. Uh, so he decides he's going to, you know, tackle this guy. Well, the sheriff's deputy, sh you know, show up. They sort it all out, and they're like, what happened? He's like, I saw him. He had a gun. And so I, you know, I jumped on him and screamed and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, and they're like, uh, hey, Sparky, guess what? You get a ride in a police car. You're going to jail for assault because you can't do that. Um, from a, the, the standpoint of the, the concealed carrier, 
he could have lawfully skinned out his Roscoe and shot that dude. You're like, oh, but what if he didn't? Like, huh? If you have a gun on you and someone attacks you and they're trying to take your gun from you, what are they doing? Well, now they're committing deadly force upon you. Now, here's the – you want to go ahead and jump in? Uh, no, just keep going if you if you want. Okay. Uh, well, the, the only – the thing I'm going to ding the, the concealed carrier guy on is – why is he handling his gun in and out of the car? Ooh, yeah, exactly. Uh, when do people have negligent discharges? Do they have negligent discharges when they have the gun in their hands and they're intending to shoot their gun? No, generally not because you have it in your hand and you're planning to shoot it. Negligent discharges, by and large, occur from administrative gun handling. The more you handle the gun throughout the day, throughout the course of the of, of your life, the more you you essentially play with your gun. You're like, I'm not playing with it. I'm putting my holster. Like, okay, calm down, Sparky. But the fact of the matter is, the more you take it out of the holster, put it back in, take it out, put it back in. I, I've known these people. They get up in the morning, they put their gun on because they're a concealed carrier, they're an armed citizen, rock on. So they put their gun in a holster and they start throughout their day. And then they, they're driving around, they're like, oh, this thing's uncomfortable, I'm going to take it out and stick it between the seats. Okay, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm where I need to be, I better get out and put it back in now. Um, I'm going to a store where they have a sign, so, oh, I, I don't want to break the law, so, but they have a sign, so I'll take it out and I'll put it under the seat. And they're constantly taking their gun off, putting it on, off, on, off, on, off, on. That is a great way to set yourself up for a negligent discharge. Because here's the fact, ask any experienced firearms instructor, trainer, what have you. Negligent discharges primarily occur during administrative handling of guns. Having the gun in your hand when you don't really want to do work with it, you're just holding it, moving it around, and what have you. The more often you do that, the greater the chances that something's going to happen that shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. And what I'll tell you is this. Folks, if you're going to carry a gun, get up in the morning, put the gun on, leave the gun on, take it off at night when you take off your pants. Um, this This... You know, arming, disarming, arming, disarming, arming, disarming all throughout the day is nonsense. And you're really kidding yourself if you think you're not. Well, no, no, you don't understand, Paul. I have to go there. Where do you have to go? I have to go into that building. Is it a courthouse? Is it a jail? Are you going into the you know, arrival gate at a terminal at an airport? Are you going through metal detectors? Well, no, but, but that's my favorite grocery store and they have a sign that says I can't carry so I take my gun out and stick it under the seat. The infamous sign. Yeah, it's like, well, A, do you, are you serious about this whole being an armed citizen thing or are you playing a game? We had in uh, where I live here, I live in Biloxi, Mississippi, mm -hmm. we had a situation uh, where 11 o'clock on a Wednesday morning, grocery store, People are shopping. Doo, 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 doo. Here comes a strange ex-husband with a pistol and a shotgun, walks into the store, starts taking hostages, um, holding the customers at gunpoint, looking for his, his estranged ex-wife, you know, all this jazz. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, people all the time, they say, like, well, I don't go to bad neighborhoods. I don't go out late at night. I don't go to bars. I don't do things I shouldn't do. Do you grocery shop? Because it's not always about you. People are like, they think that if they live their lives in a certain fashion, that they will never encounter bad people or they will never get involved with bad people. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. Uh, in this situation at the grocery store, how many of you think, well, it'd be, I mean, I'm just going into a grocery store, you know, at 11 o'clock in the morning, in the morning, you know, there, there's no chance that anything bad will happen. Really? It happens all the time. So, I mean, people get, they're at home in the middle of the day, and some monster kicks in their door, and here they are face-to-face -face with a monster, and their gun is locked in a safe upstairs in their bedroom. Well, it might as well be on the moon if it's not attached to you. Mm -hmm. So, are you playing at self-defense, or are you really serious about it? And if you want to play a game, rock on, but don't be surprised when bad things happen to you.